What's up, everybody? Old Man Boxing. Hey, I think I'm going to start doing this series because I got plenty of stories, man. I think I'm going to do a little series about Cypress Avenue where I grew up at, man. 141st Street, Beekman, and all of that because I, yo, I know stories, man. And there's a book called Wild Cowboys, um, Urban Marauders, and the Forces of Order. Yo, that, I know majority of them people in there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this out. I'm gonna, my mom still got pictures. From when I was in the first grade, I can show y'all pictures of all of them in my class in the first grade. You know what I'm saying? Even kindergarten, mom's got all of that. So, just to let y'all know, I was there. You know what I'm saying? But, um, here's a story right here. We had a neighbor. It was this couple who had moved in, like, later on, probably, like, around 80... 86 some somewhere around there around 85 86 <clears throat> and they had just got married and I guess they didn't really know what was going on in the neighborhood but um the husband started hanging out with one of the dudes that was downstairs who was doing all the um you know he was he was selling dope but he was also using dope so him and <clears throat> him and the dude you know, the, the, the dude who was married, who lived next door, they, they started smoking crack together because you started smelling it in the hallway. You started smelling it coming out their apartment. And then they started, and then they started going on the roof. And that, pro, that, that went on for about a good three or four, about a month, something like that. And then about two o'clock in the morning, you know, I was asleep, but not quite asleep. But there was this. I mean, we had bunk beds. It shook the bunk beds, but it was outside. So after about five minutes, I started hearing something go. Uh, like a real faint voice. Uh, uh, and I think I'm like, what the hell is that? And then it started getting louder and louder. It's like, help, help, help. So I got up because we was on the third floor. Still next door to Peter. But anyway, I'm not implicating them in no bullshit. But I'm just saying, this is what happened. This, this, this I think Peter had got locked up or something at this time. I'm not sure because I know that's another thing. When Peter had got locked up, the neighborhood got that much more quiet. <laughs> And that was either him, Gaka, or Chichi. Any one of them went to jail, man. The neighborhood got quiet, B. I'm dead serious. But anyway, let me get back to the story. <clears throat> so, we had a little side window right here that where there was a gate and the super used to come over there and take all the garbage and put it out by the curb. So, I looked out and I looked down and the first thing I saw was a pool of blood that was going down the drain. I mean, like, Kool-Aid, like somebody had a, a cooler full of Kool-Aid and just dumped it. That's how much blood was trickling down in the dog on in, in the dog on drain. And and I and I looked to the left a little bit and I seen the dude who lived next door to us who was newlyweds, who just they just got married and all of that. And boom, I went in my mom's room. I grabbed the phone. I said, "Mom, I need the phone." And I, and I called. I dialed nine one one. And we ain't think dude was gonna make it. Yo, you got thrown seven stories off the roof, off a of, foot, off a of crack for, for some. I guess they got in an argument on who did what, or who who was taking the next hit. And somebody got thrown off. At least that's the story I heard. You know what I'm saying? And yo, I say about three or four months later, cause the lady was there by herself. But when he got out, he couldn't talk. He couldn't do none of that. But and he had this, you know, you can tell where he got operated on because he had this big old, you know, it's like right, like right across here. It was just this big old, big old scar, like, you know what I'm saying? And I say about a year later, dude was able to talk. He was there by himself. And then I don't know what happened after that. He moved and that was the last time we seen him. But, yo, can you imagine at age 15 and, and, and. Let me see, 85, I was 14 in 85. So, you know what I'm saying? Can you imagine at that age, the type of stuff that I was exposed to with a do to people?
can you imagine getting up two o'clock in the morning and you seeing blood that much blood i'm surprised he even lived y'all it was that much blood he couldn't have had much blood left man and i'm dead serious this is not exaggeration yo that neighborhood the neighborhood i don't even know if the people on cypress knew it because i used to go out of cypress but yo they had a nickname for cypress at that time they used to call it little beirut if y'all know anything about Beirut at, at those times, Beirut was gunfire, whatever. It was, yo, man, look here, man. <laughs> wow. So that book, when they call them Wild Cowboys, they was wild, man. I mean, yo, they went, the, the stuff goes beyond, like, some of the stuff that you can even think. You know, it's like, yo, and just imagine. These are dudes who you was in class with, you went to school with, y'all got in the fights, all of this. Yo, yo, when you think about it, you get my age now and you, you reminisce and you go to think, you be like, damn, B, you know, you survived all of that, man. You know what I'm saying? And some of these dudes are still around, y'all, so don't be, don't, 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 don't take this stuff lightly, man, because they out there, you yeah. <laughs> And I wouldn't be too prone to be like, ah, oh, they ain't going to do this. Shh. All right. Old Man Boxer signing out. Peace.